over and find a vein first. We want to find the vein first. Why? Because when we have gloves on, we can't feel it. And the best veins are the ones you can feel. So we've got a vein there, a vein there, and a vein there. So the best vein that I feel is the kind of the, the juiciest one, and it's the one right in the middle. And this vein is the brachialis. The brachial vein. Brachial. The brachial vein. So next up, sir, we're going to um, put a tourniquet on. My favorite way, back up so you can see me tie it. Favorite way is to hold it like this, pull out, but then cross over, and then down low, reach back in through this way. So it's under tension, and leave it like that. And you want to leave this out so that way you can just pop it off when you're done. Full practice again. So cross over, pull out, stuff it back in there, and leave it like that. So. Then, always put your gloves on. You don't have to wear gloves, Alyssa. <laughs> Not for this part. And if you get gloves on, you can't feel as much, so if you can't see the vein, you'll want to mark the vein. But we can see it, and we know exactly where we're going. Then, this is a needle that's got uh, a butterfly needle attached to it with some tubing. When you're learning how to draw blood, these are very easy to learn with because you can see the blood and what's happening. And then you can just open it up. This is the part that goes in the person. This is the part that goes in your needle holder, which is this. And you put it in, touch it like that, and it's going to be getting ready. And we're going to go and prepare. So all around the needle, or where the needle's going to go, you want to take your, your uh, alcohol and rub it in different directions. Don't be afraid to rub because the friction kills germs just as much as the alcohol. So I like to go circle one way, circle the other way, up and down, left and right. That way we know it's nice and clean. It doesn't take long for it to dry. It will be dry by the time we get back, which we're now going to get one little piece of gauze. Don't get a lot of gauze, just a little bit. And hold it in your hand there like that. You can take one hand, put a piece, put the tube in, but don't push it all the way in, just so it's holding there, so it's loose. And then you got your tube here. These tubes have vacuums, so you don't want to break the seal of the vacuum just yet. And then we come back over here. And we pull the, the little protector off and toss it to the side. And then you see if you can zoom in to the needle and see the bevel on it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Zoom back out like that. Just zoom in with your hands. And then, okay, so there you see the, the shiny part of the needle. There it is. That's the bevel. You want to make sure it's pointed up. That way. See where we are? And then we go here and we get right to where the, the vein is, where we know what it is, and just go one, two, three, and then quickly go through the skin. And you see a little bit of blood there. The goal is for the needle to be in the vein, and you want to estimate where the middle of the vein is, because that's where the needle wants to be, to get the best blood. And you get a return here, and then we've still got our vacuum seal on our, on our tube there. So what we're going to do is break the seal by pushing it on the little needle that's in the needle holder here. And as soon as we do, you'll see the tube fill up with blood. And that's why these are so good to learn with, because you can see the blood coming out like that. This. And then, as it gets up a little bit further, the blood flow is going to start to slow down. You can see it's slowing now, so it's pretty full. So what we're going to do is take it off now, and the vacuum is going to keep the blood from dripping out right there. So we're going to take our last tube and put it in there, and same thing, just pop it in there, and it starts to flow too. Now, about the time it's getting close to the close to full, we're going to unleash the uh, the tourniquet there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Just pop it off. And then we're going to take the gauze, put it right over the needle without pressure. Pull the needle out, then push down and ask the patient to put your finger right here for just a moment with a little pressure. And since I still had a little suction left in the tube, now the tube is clear of blood and it's no longer drip. It's not going to drip out. And then you take this and push it down, and that way your needle is protected. And then you take 
this over to the sharp spoon, and then you can pull your, your blood off. So go ahead and stop it. Okay. So we've got three different veins. Okay. Why don't you name them? So this is cephalic, brachial, and basal. Basalic. Basal, okay. basal. Which one? feels the best? The basilic one. Okay, it is also, right now, the most visible. And if you have a choice, always go for the one you feel the best and not necessarily the one that's most visible. And a lot of times you can't see them at all. All right, so let's go ahead. Just get a clip of... What I like is you left your knot over on the side here and leave your workspace empty. And ooh, I'm recording, didn't I? Oh no. So go ahead and push. I did. This is actually I'm good. Slow. This is actually good. So right now what we have is a problem. So she's put her oh. um, thing in and it's going very, very slow. So a couple things are potentially happening right now. One is she's not in the vein all the way. So one thing to do is to um, either push in or pull back about a millimeter, whichever way you think it needs to go. The other thing that happens is the, uh, the needle can stick to the wall of the vessel. And so the first thing I would do is take your finger and go under the yellow part, and just one finger, and just barely lift up. But watch your return, see if it changes. Lift up, lift up, lift up. Okay, so it's still going slow. So probably you're going to need to let go of it and grab the blue wing and push in one millimeter. In the path of the vein. Oh, All right, go. so now it's sped up. So what was happening is the vein, here we go. The vein decided to uh, contract a little bit and tried to push the needle out. So, mm. do it again. Just a millimeter. If it's slow, that's okay. So it's filling up and it's almost done. So in a second, we're going to change tubes. Another thing that can potentially happen is that um, your tube has lost its vacuum. And if you have adjusted everything, switch, if you adjusted everything and you're still not getting any blood and you think it's in the vein, then switch tubes. And if you switch tubes and you're not getting any blood, then it's still a needle vein problem and not a vacuum problem. It's okay if it goes slow like that. Uh, if you're just drawing a couple of tubes, you want to just let it do that and not mess with it because you don't want to make your make your needle worse. All right, so go ahead and undo the tourniquet. The other one. All right. And quickly take the gauze, put it over your needle, and then pull the needle out. Push down with the gauze after you pull it out. There you go. A little pressure here. Pull your, yeah, adjust your, your thing there. So your needle is going to be protected. There you go. And now to the sharp spin. To, yeah, the, take the, there you go. The whole thing goes in there. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> we got Luna. We're going to look at the veins here visibly first. Alright, and this side, I 
Micah, which one do you think is going to be the best? This one. All right, we'll start palpating it. Push on it. We'll push on the other two. All right, so it looks like the brachial is going to be the best on this case. I would say that if all three of them are fairly equal, choose the brachial because it tends to be more stable as far as movement goes. It's not going to move side to side on you and run like the other two can. But you have to be careful because also along with the brachial is the median nerve. So you want to make sure you have a clear target and you don't want to just blindly stick a needle right there because the median nerve is there. Um, over here you have a tendon that's there. Over here there's some tendons, but a lot less problems than if you hit the median nerve. All right. Yeah, you'll get used to it. So you got everything in your left hand. Okay. And then you've got the needle there. You need to take the cap off there. Right. And bevel up and make sure when you insert the needle, you do it about a, I don't know, 30 degree angle or so to parallel to the skin and then uh, go in the same orientation as the vein itself. One, two, three. Look and see if you have a return. No. I don't have a return. All right. So right now the vein is going this way, but your needle don't no 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 don't turn it. But your needle is going more this way. So what you need to do is almost pull the needle out, but not all the way, and now adjust to match the angle of the vein. Okay. And then poke again. So what you need to do is pull out slightly and then aim towards here. Tilt your hand that there and keep going. There you go. Now go. And look, you've got some blood coming out. So let go with your right hand gently, slowly. Okay, and push your thing in. There you go. So now it's filling up there. Smile for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so as your blood tube is getting almost full, mm -hmm. and it is, after it gets to this level here, it's so pretty close to being full, so you can go ahead and swap it out there. There's that one good. And then when it gets up to the white, if you hold it, hold it vertical, there you go. As it gets up there, then you know, oh, I could probably go ahead and uh, undo the tourniquet since this is the last tube. So, pop your tourniquet. Probably better. There we go. And then, take your gauze and put it over the needle with your left, left hand. Everything with your left hand, except the needle with your left hand. And then, Take out the needle with the right hand. Now push down with the left. So your don't move, hold still. Mm -hmm. So because you didn't have enough suction left, mm -hmm. you've got a little drop of blood right there on the end. Okay, so Laura, take your gauze and you go ahead, we're not gonna go ahead and pull your thing down without me. Ah, it's gonna spill. Right. So go ahead and push the yellow part down. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>these are the most common tubes that, you, that we use for drawing blood and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them so that way you can best pick your tubes. Of course the, the real answer is to look at the test you're going to be doing and then uh, look up that information with the laboratory that you're using. They'll tell you which tube to use. But basically in primary care there's two tubes that we use a lot of. One is a serum separator tube and that is one of these two tubes um, some labs like the, uh, the speckled or tiger top tubes the best, and other labs will prefer the gold top tubes. And they're essentially the same tube that has a serum 
I'm sorry, a serum separator gel. Serum separator gel in the bottom. What the gel does is we allow the blood clot, we spin it down, and the gel moves into the middle, and the serum goes to the top, and the blood cells go to the bottom, so that way the serum test Things like electrolytes, liver, enzymes, and other proteins like antibodies will be suspended in the serum for testing. And so your lab will tell you which of those tubes to use. Occasionally we'll have a serum test that does not go well with the gel because it interacts with the, with the gel itself. And so then you need a, a red top tube is what they call this, even though it's more like a burnt orange color. And it does not have a gel in the bottom, so again, you allow it to clot, spin it down in the centrifuge, and then very carefully draw off the serum from the top of the blood cells and put them in a separate container. Um, so those are the serum tests. So you're going to use one of those three, most likely, with your lab. Um, then the whole blood test, things like the hemoglobin A1C, or complete blood count, or peripheral smear on your lab, and sometimes some of the genetic tests, we'll use a lavender tube. And the lavender tube has a chemical, let's see if we can see which chemical it is, it is not letting me focus, anyway, it's EDTA, and the EDTA will prevent the blood from clotting, and then um, it remains, I mean, you can still separate them if you want to, but generally that what they'll do is mix the tube up and then do a sample of that for a whole blood test. Um, or you might have a plasma test, which is very similar to serum, except the clotting factors are still in plasma. So in which case, like the red top tube, you would spin it down and draw off the top layer of this plasma that's the liquid separate from the blood cells. This is a heparin-containing tube. It's used for some other whole blood tests, like some of the genetic tests. And um, again, you spin, I'm sorry, you draw the blood in the heparin in here instead of ETTA. The heparin will prevent the uh, blood from clotting. And then lastly, another common blood uh, tube that we use is the, the blue top tube, the light blue top tube. And it's used for specifically the clotting tests like the PTT and PTINR tests to look at um, uh, some of the clotting times and with the, with the blood. But with this one especially, you have to make sure you fill this up completely and mix it thoroughly. And um, it is best with these two if you fill them up completely and mix them thoroughly also. But definitely very important with this one. So if we go on to uh, look at what we have done, the, this is an example of a lavender tube that we have filled with blood, and you can see the blood is still liquid state because it's got an anti-clotting factor, EDTA, in there. And so now we can do whole blood tests with that. So at the lab, they will take off a, uh, a drop or a milliliter, however much they need of the blood, and uh, do the test on it. So CBCs, A1C, um, some of the genetic tests, but that's that. Then we've got one of our uh, serum separator tubes. And this is one that has not been spun down yet. So you can see the serum separator gel still at the bottom there. And then the, uh, the blood is at the top. And if I move it, it looks kind of like it's in a liquid, but if you see the last little bit, it's actually a clot. There it is, a clot of blood. And so what we do is we allow the blood to clot and then put it in the centrifuge, spin it, and then they separate. And here is an example of one that we've done that with. So the serum is now the liquid. That's the kind of yellowish liquid at the top there. We've got the, the gel that's still there, and then we've got the blood cells at the bottom. And so now they will take off just the serum and do serum tests like uh, liver enzyme test, creatinine, glucose, uh, electrolytes, or antibody tests, like if we're looking for uh, the monoantibodies or HIV antibodies or things like that. Um, and here is an example of a lavender tube that has the 
anti-clotting factors. Clotting factors have uh, not been removed, but they're um, occupied by the EDTA. And so if we mix it up, now you see the blood and the plasma are mixing again. And so then essentially you could shake it up and do whole blood tests. But I've got another one to show you again that has them separate. So what you would do is very carefully rem remove the top or otherwise uh, uh, insert a needle to get to the plasma that's in there without disturbing the cells at the bottom. And then you have plasma tests that can be run.